Welcome everyone. My name is Ross Donahue. I am a cartographer on the Story Maps team. Um, I want to welcome you to the third episode of Story Maps Live. Um, I'm coming to you from Washington, D.C. Yeah. I've got a bunch of my colleagues on the line as well. Um, I'm really excited in particular to be able to uh, introduce our featured storytellers this week from Black Girls Map. Raina and Whitney, um, they'll be talking in a little bit about the work that they're doing. Um, the general schedule for the next hour will be, uh, we'll start with an overview of what story maps are. We'll talk about um, how they're being used. And then we'll go into our featured storyteller. Um, it'll be kind of a presentation and discussion. Um, and then we'll have a brief demo of all the new updates and enhancements to uh, the product that have come out most recently. And then we'll have a time for a live Q&A session where if you have any questions about story maps, you can post them to the chat window and we'll answer them live. Um, this is our third episode, so we've figured out that, you know, that, that chat window really fills up. So if we can't get to your question, we'll be sure to uh, post those responses online um, this is being recorded, so um, at the end of it, we'll also be posting um, the video on our website, so you can take a look if there's anything that you missed or want to check back in on. Um, so with that, I want to turn it over to my, my uh, boss, Alan Carroll, who's coming to you from California. Great. Thanks, Ross. Um, everybody seeing uh, what's the story map? Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm going to introduce things. Uh, forgive me for moving quickly because I want to, uh, we want to move on to the, to the meat of this session, but just to make sure that uh, people have uh, background information, I'm going to very quickly talk about what a story map is. They're web apps that combine interactive maps with your multimedia content, so your photos, videos, and sometimes audio. Uh, and text to tell stories about the world. And by world, I mean essentially everything in the world uh, at, at any and all scales. They work on a variety of screen sizes. So in other words, they're responsive. So you can uh, view them just as nicely on mobile devices as, and, and tablets, as well as uh, PCs and laptops. And this, the secret sauce, I think, of story maps are that they in, incorporate interactive builders. So you don't need to know JavaScript and CSS and all of that abstruse stuff. You simply use what we call our block palette to, uh, to block by block, uh, piece by piece, build and edit your story. And we'll get more into that later. They're hosted by Esri in the cloud on our GIS online, so you don't have to worry about hosting. Uh, but when we host, that doesn't mean we own the content. It's your content. Uh, we've had a very exciting few years. So we've gone from 120 story maps in 2012 to 1.1 million and more in uh, early 2020. It's been uh, thrilling to see uh, you and many others adopt our, our, uh, our little platform, uh, including many organizations. So we're thrilled that uh, uh, nonprofits like conservation organizations are using our story maps. Many federal agencies, uh, perhaps prominent among them, uh, EPA and NOAA, uh, each use, um, publishing maintaining scores of story maps. Library of Congress has a really cool little story map program. Park Service, other nonprofits, Smithsonian, uh, my alma mater, National Geographic is using them too. Another thing that's really cool and exciting for us is that they've really taken off in the classroom. So teachers are using story maps for instructional purposes, but students uh, are using story maps and creating story maps often as alternatives to traditional re uh, research papers. That's, that's especially exciting. Uh, to us. Um, I'm going to quickly run through some of the uses of story maps, and they're, they're myriad. Uh, one of the fun things about our job is to discover how people are using story maps, sometimes in, in ways that, that we never would have expected. One that we did, and perhaps a primary use, is public engagement. So an organization or a federal agency or a city government uh, simply letting uh, their constituents know about uh, a program or initiative or issue or you name it. Uh, speaking of issues, of course, uh, many advocacy organizations are, uh, are using story maps as calls to action. Uh, so perhaps instead of a view the story button, you might see a volunteer or a donate button or a sign this petition button. 
Um, they're being used for briefings and presentations, just like I am now. I have retired from PowerPoint. That's fine story. That's <laughs> much more fun to make and more dynamic to uh, for people to, to view and, uh, and use. I've talked about education and how things are taking off there. Um, story maps have huge potential as personal narratives. So anytime I take a vacation, I come back with my fingers literally itching to make a story map of my experience. I urge you to do the same. Um, they're, they're being used occasionally by annual reports. Rotary International did a uh, really effective annual report in story map form. Um, you can also introduce your staff or your company or your team uh, like uh, the Trust for Public Lands did with its far flung GIS staff. Uh, you can also use it as an online guide. So in this case, it's a guide to the trees of the Pacific Northwest, but guides can also be in the form of, of guided tours that take, take you from place to place on an interactive map with accompanying multimedia content. Story maps, of course, can be atlases, so you can see, uh, feature a series of maps so people can compare and contrast and explore thematic maps of various sorts. Uh, some small organizations are using story maps as essentially their landing page because you can, you can combine so much uh, rich content. Uh, they work actually quite well that way. You can promote events. Uh, you can use story maps for instructional purposes in some ways, just like I'm doing now, but uh, many people are essentially uh, showing how to do, for instance, some kind of geospatial analysis uh, in the form of, uh, and, and telling that story in the form of a story map. You can also combine story maps with Survey123 and other ESRI apps. Uh, in this case, we asked people to share uh, for last year's Earth Day their favorite places in nature. And so you can peruse what other people have shared and then uh, find within the story a survey form that allows you to add your own title and description and upload a photograph that uh, appears more or less instantaneously on the map. Uh, it's being used in some political campaigns with some success. Uh, also being used by emergency responders and others as simply a place to gather uh, like a sort of a virtual binder, a bunch of different uh, resources and services. So pe busy people fighting a fire, for instance, can go to one place to find a bunch of, uh, bunch of related resources. Uh, you can use it to feature your portfolio. Real estate uh, companies love it because, of course, uh, real estate is all about location and source for apps. Uh, and then uh, we're also seeing people uh, uh, use story maps uh, as a sort of multimedia resume. Uh, Amanda Huber, we've gotten to know at the user conference, um, created a really nice one that we think helped her get a job, but she's now gainfully employed in, uh, in Minnesota. So um, just a few of the many uses of, uh, of story maps. Finally, I'm going to talk very quickly about a new story, why a new story map. So in June of last year, we, we released our second generation storytelling platform. Um, and so this, these, we're seeing this ultimately as replacing the, uh, what we now call our classic apps, although they will, be, uh, they will remain accessible and usable for, for, for many, many moons into the future. Uh, but the new story maps combines it is, is a, uh, features a single builder within which you can emulate or, or choose among various uh, functions, everything from text formatting to, uh, to immersive sections that, that resemble uh, some of our classic apps. For instance, our sidecar uh, section is very much like the classic story map journal. Uh, it also incorporates express maps, which we're really excited about. So the idea is that we wanted sophisticated mappers and GIS people to continue to use Esri's our GIS online resource but we built a separate mapping window, mapping function, so that people can create simple maps that take you from place to place, for instance, feature, uh, feature routes, uh, annotations, uh, areas, things like that, uh, in a very kind of intuitive uh, user experience. Uh, we've also updated the design, and we've given you a choice of design. So with one click, you can change the look and feel of your story. There will be more design themes coming in the future. Uh, we've changed the, uh, the way that story maps are saved and published. So there's an autosave function as you, do, as you build your story. You don't have to constantly be, remember to be, uh, to be clicking on a, a, on a save button. It saves for you. You can also edit, you can also publish a story map and then take it into edit mode, uh, do a bunch of edits, and then, then essentially swap out your newly edited story map for the one that was published. Um, we've worked really hard to make these make our stories load quickly. Uh, 
we've optimized performance across these different platforms. We've made it easy, made them e easy to share, and we think they look really cool. <laughs> um, and this is just the first step. So this is a work in progress. We're working hard toward and getting closer and closer day by day to what we call full parity with our classic apps, but not just full parity, but adding cool new features like uh, like slideshow that, that that didn't exist in this former uh, in in our former apps. So stay tuned for uh, new and exciting stuff to come. So with that very quick and rushed tour, I'm going to uh, stop my share and turn it back over to, uh, to Ross. Take it away, Ross. Thanks a lot, Alan. So there will be more about the actual builder in a little bit in our demo portion. But now I'm really excited to introduce our featured storytellers. Um, every uh, Story Maps Live, we have featured storytellers that we um, bring on to share with the Story Maps community um, the great work that they're doing. And I'm really excited to introduce Whitney and Raina of Black Girls Map. Um, they are founding mem members of Black Girls Map, which stands for Black Girls Mapping with Action to Pioneer Progress. And so I'm going to turn it over to them and let them share their screen and talk about the great work that they're doing. If at any point you have questions for them specifically, feel free to put that in the chat window um, of this webinar. Okay, with that, I'll hand it over to you guys. Thank you so much, Ross. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to start off by thanking the Story Matters team for giving us this opportunity to share who we are and what we're about. My name is Raina Kamau. Um, I'm the co-founder of Black Girls Map. Um, professionally, I work as a partner technical advisor here in professional services at Esri. Um, I, I work with partners to enforce and enable their long-term um, geospatial strategy. Um, and I also work as their advocate to our product teams here on campus and all over. I also provide advisory support uh, to various inquiries that they might be having. And I'm proudly Kenyan meaning I'm a woman of color in this field of GIS. Thanks, Raina. Uh, my name is Whitney Kotluski. I'm a senior user experience designer, a part of Esri's Creative Lab. I've worked on several different products, um, ranging from desktop to web to mobile. Um, I've been here about five and a half years at Esri, and um, I'm also a Esri fellow um, pursuing a PhD in information systems and technology. Uh, I'm a proud mother and wife, but I'm a two-year-old who probably isn't tuning in on this one uh, just yet, but I'll show her the recording. Um, but we're really excited to be able to share the work that Black Girls Math is doing. Um, it's just to kind of set the stage for you guys of what to expect today. Um, we're going to be basically just kind of giving you guys like an overview of uh, our mission, um, some of the projects that we've been working on, highlighting one of our story maps um, that kind of caught some wave and attention um, around social justice issues, and also talk about the road ahead and how you could maybe get involved to help us keep going. So I'm gonna, with that, I'm gonna let Raina take the lead on starting us off. Yeah, so just to start us off, um, just a quick uh, foundational story of where Black Girls Map started. Whitney and I actually met about two years ago. Um, and one of the days while we were having lunch, we started talking about our GIS journeys, you know, and how we came to learn about GIS. And in that same conversation, we also made a very, uh, a very um, quick observation that there was a lack of representation of women um, of African descent in this field of GIS. We realized that, you know, they, there are a lot of um, people that do not look like us in the field of GIS and so we were st we started asking ourselves why um, so this is what in turn led into us doing some research about women of color in the field of GIS and to be quite honest that data was pretty challenging to find so we had to zoom out and look at women of color in STEM or in IT um, and so we found this information that um, according to the National Science Foundation women, um, although women represent half of the college age population, women of color actually make up 10% with black women only earning 3% of those degrees. And that data was appalling to us. Um, when looking across all women employed in the um, computer and information science occupations, we found that 
out of all um, all representation, women, black women took about about seven percent of our um, of them actually being in that field. And so this indicated and kind of confirmed to us the lack of representation of black women in GIS. Um, we tend to be vastly underrepresented across the technology pipeline. Um, and many strategies and interventions, as well as investments that have been made to diversify technology or the technology ecosystem, um, have focused on race and gender, overlooking the intersectional um, or the intersection of race and gender. So this, we looked at this data and we said, well, what can we do about it, right? Um, and this is where Black Girls Map came up, um, came up from. We, as Ross introduced us, the map in our Black Girls Map um, uh, icon <laughs> stands for Mapping with Action to Pioneer Progress in Our Community. Um, we are an ESRI internal employee resource group focused on evangelizing GIS by um, engaging in projects that kind of enable underrepresented communities or groups to visualize data surrounding certain social issues that they might not see out there um, in the field of GIS. So at first, we actually started by saying, let's recognize women in this field, let's celebrate Black women, let, let's let them know that there's Black women out here. And then that kind of evolved into wanting to collaborate on projects that make an impact to the community. Um, so our primary objectives are to, you know, connect people to resources, create awareness through blogs and, you know, social media content, as well as celebrating the Black women in, the, in um, in GIS, and I think this was perfect timing, knowing that February is Black History Month, it's um, it's only fitting for us to do so. So what we have, um, if you get a chance or opportunity, we came up with a, a short, you know, two minute video encompassing uh, the, um, the vision of what Black Girls Map is and what we aspire to be. We can share out these resources after the webinar, but that's a quick video that goes into who we are um, and what we're about. So right now, I will hand it over to Whitney for her to talk about the projects that we've been um, involved in. Go ahead. Yeah, awesome. Um, so as Raina mentioned, uh, we at first started looking at Black women um, because that was kind of the initiation of Black Girls Now. Uh, Throughout our entire time, I think being at Esri and even in conversations with some of our mentors who, who have been kind of paving the way for us um, at Esri, we asked that question of like, are there more, are there right. women of color? Where are they? Like, I know it's not just Don Wright, you know? Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and so as we were working within our networks, uh, you know, many of our mentors were kind of like, you know, the, there are women out there, there are people of color out there, but you know, we just don't know quite who they are. And so that made us, with the mapping with action, say, well, let's get some women on the map. Um, so we did an extensive search. This required us to go through lots of social media. We've been meeting women. We would have never, we talked to strangers, basically, just trying to find out, hey, would you like to be added to our map? So we actually were contacting people, going out into our surrounding community to say, hey, we're trying to map as many black women in GIS as we can. At first, we thought the number was going to be like 100. Right. You know, we were happy when we got 100. And then we started seeing the number grow. And this is actually um, growing quite extensively to the point where we have a lot of international women, specifically from um, the Caribbean, who want to be added. So we have probably like another 110 women that haven't actually gone on this map yet because um, we didn't use crowdsourcing at that particular time when we started this project. Um, but this is just highlighting uh, Black women in GIS. Um, we used Web App Builder, ArcGIS Online um, was a helpful resource as well and was able to embed it into this particular presentation. Another app that um, kind of, I think, caught some attention as well within the Black community specifically um, is our Black Business Map. Um, we had a lofty goal of trying to tackle the entire U.S. Uh, we realized quickly that that wasn't going to be something that we could totally do in the time frame. Um, and so we scaled it back to California. We looked at different black uh, businesses or at least black business directories, um, tried to collaborate in that sense to be able to pull from already learned knowledge around businesses in California, as well as letting community members add. So I think we started with like 800 and so far we've had like 112 people already adding to this app and it was released like just a couple months ago. 
Um, in this app, you can, we, we, we were tasked with not trying to extend too much of web app filter, but in the future, we're hoping to tap into the JavaScript API and actually do a little bit more customization. Um, but we do provide um, businesses by county, business by industry, and we also give people um, quick, helpful infographics around uh, target market areas, um, just to be able to highlight for maybe more uh, new black business in those particular regions. And this is a crowdsource uh, app, which is, is nice. So it moves definitely nicely. Um, it's very dynamic. All right, let's jump into our story map, uh, the class of preventable shootings. Uh, now, this particular story map that uh, became a quick project because there was two events that kind of happened back to back. Um, Atiana Jefferson, as well as Bach and Jean, um, were recently shot and killed by law enforcement and they both were very young. And the thing that really stood out about their situations was that they both were unarmed and just in their homes. And so that, that resonated with us because we continue to hear the same story. Um, a lot of times it's the same narrative, um, but there's, not, there's little to no action. And so I believe it was Raina um, and a few other colleagues from Black Girls Map, uh, well, as well as we can, we're, we're having a conversation around it and we decided that we kind of wanted to do something this. Um, the best way to do it was to just use story maps, use GIS to start the conversation in the best way we knew how. Um, one of the things that we were tasked with is not to, to remove self out of the way or remove our emotions out of the way and to really try to lean on facts to help paint this picture of the narrative that we thought um, people needed to hear. And so that's one of the things that, you know, when we start talking about the way in which we tell stories, we're really trying our best um, to lean on factual data. But as everyone knows, um, anybody that's a researcher knows that it also, when you're presenting data, you bring with you your perspective, you, your lens on the situation. And we feel that as, black, as an organization that because we are women of color, we are people of color, we also, we're also women, you know, we can come with some different perspectives on a lot of the situations and issues that are going on around us. And the power that we have to use the tools of GIS, specifically our GIS, um, can really help us um, motivate and encourage and bring up that awareness that uh, maybe other marginalized communities and people within our surrounding communities can kind of lean on as a, as a thing to get them going to start having those conversations. Today, a colleague was just meeting with Michael Brown's mother, who um, her son was, recent, was also a couple years ago killed by law enforcement. And he was able to um, at least share with her that people have tried to pick up the, the, the torch. People are picking up the flame to keep it going, to have these conversations around um, the issue, around this, uh, this particular issue. So when you get the chance, feel free to take a look at that story map. There's a lot that we cannot. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't want to use it the whole time to go through it. Um, but yes, we, we definitely uh, leaned on a lot of uh, data analysis. We used insights for ArcGIS for um, this particular story map as far as how we analyze the data. We refactor some things visually, but um, we definitely leaned on our, our just platform to help kind of bring all these insights to life. The next project, uh, this is an in-progress project. So we're currently working on it. There's a team of people, about four or five folks that are currently working on this. Um, it's using news data, GL data. And what we're doing is basically trying to have a conversation around hate um, in America, but from the perspective of how the news has shaped uh, that narrative around hate and our understanding around hate. So this isn't necessarily pointing fingers at any particular person or group. What it's having a conversation around is how we're interpreting, how the news is interpreting what's happening around us and how we're receiving it. Um, what you guys see right now in this particular dashboard is windows, and we're calling these like these peak windows um, activity. So what's happening is that GDL data is basically being collected and categorized, and what's happening is we're pinpointing um, where the most traffic is happening around a particular event. So say if it was, um, a shooting somewhere in a particular region and the entire country is talking about it but what we're looking at is like where are the high traffic regions um, and where was the source to so what we're hoping to do with this project is start to look at these like larger conglomerate uh, news uh, companies and seeing who's kind of controlling these narratives around a lot of the social justice and a lot of our issues that we're seeing across the country um, you know not just uh, in 
things like crime and shootings, but even in other issues around health um, and even our politics. So um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, to what becomes of this project. Please stay tuned. We're hoping to have a, a release of this on the next month or two. Uh, the next project is also an in-progress one. Um, it's the State of Immigration in the U.S. Uh, this particular project, I know Raina's heading it up and leading it um, with uh, the BGMAP group. Um, but one thing that we wanted to try to do is, and we've been doing this a lot, um, is trying to balance using our software of our GIS as well as then trying to communicate that into a digestible format for people, like we said, in the community that are going to be receiving this information. Um, so with this particular project, it will end up living in a story map. Um, we're hoping to use all the new features that you guys are going to be talking about in a little bit um, and, and really showing the, the beauty of story maps. Uh, but one of the things that we're also doing is doing interviews with um, families, family members, and people that have kind of been impacted by um, our immigration situation right now in the U.S. Uh, to try to bring a little bit more personability um, to the conversation and not just the he said, she said, and what we received from the data, we're also going to be leaning on people telling us exactly how they've been experiencing um, a lot of the, the, the problems and the frustrations and the challenges that are coming along with um, our immigration laws. And then uh, last but not least, we have some academic projects. Uh, if you guys go to like the GIS lounge, we've actually been getting quite a bit of traffic on this particular, very simple. We tried to really highlight that it was super, super simple. I think it, it, we were tasked with like a 10 minute, like we were like, let's just do an exercise of a 10 minute project, let's get it out. Um, but this is just basically showing people um, the comparisons of GIS offerings. So these are for new students who want to engage in GIS potentially as a career or as in, in their academics, um, but don't know where to start. We got so many women when we showed you that map uh, prior with the 300 uh, black women in GIS who contacted us and said, thank you so much. Now, how do I get a job in GIS? Right. I've been looking for a job. Or, hey, you know what? We've, we've actually done a lot of conversations with young people. We have a, a presentation with Colton High School that's coming up. And we get young people who are like, I really didn't hear about GIS, but now I'm thinking maybe I'll pursue a career in GIS, but what school do I go to? Right. Um, so we wanted to be able to provide offerings that um, students could uh, engage in so that way, uh, you know, we can give them a little bit of direction as to where they can go. Um, so yeah, if you guys get a chance to take out, check out that dashboard, it's dynamic and synced so that the maps, uh, as you're looking and, and drilling into particular regions, you'll see the other offerings as well, um, the other two maps provided. Um, last but not least, this one is going to be a super cool uh, project coming up. Um, we have two specific individuals on the apps group, Ade and Dawit, who are kind of helping lead the way on this mobile uh, tour app. Um, so it's going to be a native application uh, using our runtime SDK on iOS and Android. Um, but basically, it's kind of initiating this conversation around gentrification that's happening across the US. Um, and what we did, instead of trying to just do it from a fact base, we said, let's create a tour and bring up all that lost history that is kind of getting swept under the rug as new people are moving in and the people that were there are getting pushed out. Um, let's revive uh, some of that history. And so that way people who, in this particular case, we're focusing on Harlem right now, we're hoping to roll that out to Chicago, to DC, um, we're looking at LA, we, we, at, you could this past UC, we had so many people coming up to us that were like, you better come to our city and you know, we'll help you, you know, so we're really excited that we think um, after this particular project is done, we'll get a lot more community uh, collaboration for the next one. So please stay tuned for our mobile mapping tour uh, of lost history in Harlem coming soon. And so I'm going to kick it back off to Raina to let you guys know what our road ahead is looking like. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so thanks, Raina. We, um, so as, as much as we are very involved in projects, we tend to be um, also asked to provide mentorship or go speak at um, high schools or uh, academic institutions. These are just our next events that we kind of have um, coming up this year. Like Whitney talked about, we are going to have a TEDx talk with uh, Colton High School. We're also collaborating with the Boston Public Library Mapping Collaboration. They have a really cool project on same data, different story, um, something that we're really excited about. We are also, we've also gotten invited to the Blacks in Technology Conference in Chicago, as well as um, a huge event that we are uh, 
marketing and yes. putting the word out there that we are going to be having an event here at the Esri um, Auditorium um, on the on the 28th of this of this month commemorating Black history. Now we could not have done this alone. Um, we've had partners and people that we've collaborated um, and we really wanted to kind of highlight them as well. We want to highlight We Can and We Can um, stands for Women Empowerment and Career Advancement Network. It's an internal facing employee resource group spearheaded by Margot and her leadership team. They're kind of like a, a women's empowerment group that's focused on creating a network that aids in the advancement of women and the careers of women in the field of GIS. Um, we also uh, wanted to shout out uh, Mapping Black California, and this is um, an initiative or a community that's spearheaded by Dr. Paulette uh, Brown Hines. They um, they engage in community empowerment through mapping and advocacy, cartography, map collective wisdom of the community. They map assets um, and also uh, tell fuller stories about the community. So, thank you, Paulette, and um, and your team. And finally, we also wanted to highlight North Star. This is uh, up and coming. Actually, it's a very um, established uh, internal employee resource group here at Esri. It's spearheaded by Clinton Johnson and his uh, leadership team. They pretty much just um, create a space and they aim to support Esri's effort to attract, mentor, and retain the best talent across the GIS spectrum with a focus on promoting professional development, growing leadership, and also inclusion of people of African uh, descent at all position levels. So we want to say thank you to all our partners for you know um, sharing who we are and what we do and as well as working together with us. So we just hit the 20 minute mark. We want to um, say thank you, but before we say that, um, we have resources, we have our website, which is bgmap.org if you want to get more information on everything else that we're working on. If you want to reach out to us, we have blackgirlsmap at esri.com. Feel free to send us a quick email if you want to, if you want us to collaborate or if you would want to participate or for us to work together, feel free to reach out to us. We're also on social media at Black Rose Map on Twitter as well as Instagram. So thank you everybody. Yeah. We really appreciate the time and we can open it up. Or questions? Yeah. Or questions? Thoughts, concerns. <laughs> yeah, we have time for one or two questions. Feel free to add them to the chat uh, chat list here. Um, I see people have been chatting throughout uh, your presentation. And um, thank you both so much for taking the time to be with us today and sharing these stories. I know they're so inspiration inspirational for all of us. Um, let's see if we've got a couple questions from the audience. Um, one one question that I had was, um, do you have any storytelling tips for folks? You know, you mentioned, you know, every story that you tell is bringing a perspective. I was wondering if you could um, talk more about that and any other sort of storytelling tips for folks who are just getting started, maybe. Yes. Uh, one thing I would say is it's okay to fail quick and fast. So definitely dive into story maps, see what features uh, are available and just start just start trying to lay things down as like a can like a blank canvas um, even though you might not necessarily have your data quite the way that you want um, the other thing too that um, I think like when we start thinking about our strategy because we actually with that preventable shootings uh, story map if you want to go to it mm -hmm. one of the things that we've been doing and this is that story map the reason we go to it all the time is because that's the model for all of the different story maps that are coming out in the next couple months. Um, and, and so the reason for why that's the model is because we were able to take a very sensitive topic and issue and still dress it in a very non-biased uh, form factor, which is basically, even if you disagree with some of the things that we're pointing out, you can't necessarily disagree with the data. The data. So that's one thing that we've learned is, especially with sensitive topics, Try to remove emotion, try to remove self, try to remove biases out of the way and really allow for yourself to lean on the data. Um, use visualizations as best to your ability. Um, that's another thing that was super helpful for us is not to make it so uh, textual based, um, to really leverage um, the different like typography options that StoryMaps provides um, as another helpful uh, resource. And then um, 
try your best to kind of like, as far as our like actual timeline and format, we usually try to set the stage. Um, and this is just from a high level. And then we try to zoom in and then we try to come back out and then zoom right back in again. And during those like zooming out and zooming in, what we're trying to do is create some type of like connection um, for people that are actually reading the story map to say, oh, I remember that in the news or oh, that, that person, I feel like I'm connected to this story to draw them in a little bit. Because if you guys, once we give the high level, it's just kind of setting the, the, the stage. But once we start drilling into these more personal stories, um, bringing in real people in their real life situation, it's hard to not, you know, focus on it. You're going to, you're going to get attention right, right. there. Um, and then once we do that, now that we got your attention, we go, okay, now we can give you some more facts. Now we can, you know, what are you with the facts again? Um, and then after we give you the facts, we go right back, um, zooming in again to say, now, what do we do to actually move forward with this? Why did we present this to you today? You know, we want you to be able to take this with you so you can actually help us in the, in the path of like, trying to do something about it. Um, so always, always end with some type of actionable item. Always try to encourage for further progress and whatever you're talking about. Um, but yes, yeah, story, storytelling for us, uh, the story maps team, you guys have just done a phenomenal job and you're making it so much easier for Black Girls Map to continue to do the work that we're doing. Um, so yes, I definitely just encourage people to just dive in. Um, fail. Yeah, fail, fail quick and then, and then really try to make sure you understand the purpose and, and have a true connection to the story that you're telling so that you can with all your might. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Really appreciate your time and your thoughts. Um, we're going to move to the live demo portion of our Story Maps Live. I'm going to uh, share my screen now and uh, show you how to get started using Story Maps and uh, really talk about the latest features that have been uh, released in our January release. So. Every couple of months, there's new features and enhancements that come into the product. Um, a lot of those are dictated by uh, the Story Maps community. So when we hear from you that you want, you know, this particular feature incorporated, um, that gets incorporated into the product itself. Um, so when you're getting started, there's lots of different ways to get to uh, get started with Story Maps. If you're at esri.com, you can just sign into your account. I've got mine preloaded. Um, so you can sign in directly. Or you can go um, to esri.com slash story maps. And what this will do is take you directly to um, Esri's story maps page. And when you're on this page, you can learn about story maps product itself. You can explore stories. There's lots of resources on there as well. Um, but what I'm going to show is how to actually start building your own story map. So I just clicked the launch story map. Looks like something's showing up on the screen. Um, okay, so what we'll do now is we will just click create new story. And this is the builder view. So in the builder, um, you this is the authoring experience. So it's really easy to get started. You can just type your title. Um, let's say, and then you can just quickly add text and get going. What I'm going to show for this demo, because we have limited time, is a pre-created story map that really emphasizes these latest um, additions. Um, so in this story map, what I've done is I have pre-populated content. And some of the most exciting new features include story actions, which allow you to change the data on a map with one click. 
the guided tour block. and the credits block. There's also other features like changing the font colors, having a print option, creating private links, and uh, editing the embed card properties. So what I'm gonna do is just go into the story map and show you how to actually, um, how to edit these uh, new features within story maps. So if you're not familiar with story maps at all, um, it's important to just get a quick tour of the interface. So up here at the top, you have a design panel where you can change the cover layout with one click. You can change the theme of your story itself. So with one click, it changes the fonts, the background color, um, and some of the other colors within your story. You can also change the fonts or add a logo really easily. For that credits block that I mentioned, um, at the bottom of the story, that's located in the design panel. So you go to design and then you click um, here to be able to turn on and off this credits layer. If you start adding um, content to it, but later realize that you don't want it, you can just turn that off at any point. So now what I'm gonna show is how to use story actions. So here I've built, I've created a, a sidecar block. Um, when you're authoring a story map, it's built using um, this block palette where you can add text block types, graphics, images, multimedia, and then these special, um, these special blocks that allow you to create different user ex experiences for your readers. Um, these help enhance your storytelling content and really take your, your storytelling to the next level. I'm sorry about this uh, drawing on the screen if that's coming through on your end. I can take care of that in a second. Um, so what I wanna show right now is the story actions. So here I am, I've got a web map in a sidecar um, block. And it's really easy to um, create and modify these. So in the block palette, you'll see this map action is activated. You click that. And then you can go in and uh, show which layers you want to have on there um, when somebody clicks on that button. So for instance, if I wanted to emphasize the threatened sites, save action, and then as your readers go through your story, they can click on these different buttons, and there we have it. You can see um, that story action has been uh, created. Another way to use it is to change the view of your story. So with this story action, it actually has you zoom in on a specific uh, place in the world, and uh, changes the base map to a satellite view. Um, this is a really effective way of communicating large quantities of data and allowing your readers to go deeper into uh, the story and the content that you provide for them. The next uh, new feature, this is a, another uh, special block. This is called the guided tour block. When you create a guided tour, you can have it in one of two ways. One where it's really focused on the, the multimedia in this panel with a map, uh, locator map up here, um, and then text describes here, just text descriptors here. Um, and you can see it as the reader goes through this story, the map's changing, the media's changing, and the text is scrolling. If at any point you wanna change to um, the other uh, viewing experience. Uh, the, the other layout is more map focused. So if you just click that other map um, layout, you can see that now you have the imagery here, the text floating on top of a map, and you can see that there's 
um, where that where that place is. So if you want to add a new point, you would just simply click here, new slide, add an image. Can add some text. And you can add a location for this new point. I find it really easy to just type in the place, set the zoom extent, and then you just click to add the point, click place map. And then you can see um, that this place is uh, where it's located. You can add more text if you want. And uh, again, you can put you can switch between your layouts really easily. So if I want to go back to that uh, media focused layout, that way uh, you can really emphasize. The, the beautiful um, imagery related to these sites. Um, so it's, it really opens up a lot of storytelling possibilities. I, w I really want to emphasize trying that out. I've already mentioned this credits. Um, another feature that's really exciting is you can change the color of text now. Um, this was uh, a feature that was asked for by a lot of people and so you can uh, use this. Um, it just opens up a lot of possibilities for your storytelling in the future. Um, if you want to print your story map, you can now get there by going to these three dots at the top and clicking print. Um, this will create a, uh, an, a version that you can use um, and distribute to people um, whether you want to print it out or if you if you don't have as much connectivity, um, you can print that out as well. Again, that's in beta form and it's uh, continuing to be updated. Um, we're running low on time, so I'm just going to speed through a couple more uh, enhancements. One being the sharing settings. Um, you can now share, uh, you know, create a private sharing option or share it specifically with groups that you're working with. So that can be really helpful for collaboration um, in particular. Um, so with that, I'm going to have to cut the demo a little short um, so that we can take live questions um, from the audience. Um, so if at any point uh, in the next five minutes you have questions, um, feel free to uh, put that um, in the chat window and we'll answer those questions live. We've got um, Arvind here as well as myself and, and David here to answer questions to you guys. Um, and if we don't get to them, then we will uh, be sure to follow up afterwards on the Story Maps Live website. Um, so feel free to ask any questions into the chat window at this time. While we're waiting for questions, I want to show you what's coming next. So um, the enhancements that I just mentioned in this January release included um, map tour, map and story actions, um, new Express Maps features, printing, and text formatting options, um, as well as a lot of little tiny uh, improvements. In future releases, one of uh, some of the exciting ones coming up are story navigation, bookmarks. Um, you'll be able to add geotagged photos and videos directly to that guided tour experience, which should make it really easy um, for you to uh, add uh, that into your story. Um, there'll be new styles for Express Map annotations. We didn't get to go into um, Express Maps really detailed, but there's lots of resources on our website to check out about that. 
um, and then more uh, pre-packaged Living Atlas content that you can uh, incorporate. If there are features or enhancements that you'd like to see to the product, um, feel free to put that into uh, this chat window at any point. Um, that feedback is really great to uh, get from you guys in particular. Um, let's see, in terms of stories, uh, in terms of questions that we've received, um, when you select the print, when you select the print beta option, what format does it produce? Um, so you can save this directly um, as a PDF. Um, it has the same sort of print options that you would see um, if you're just printing a document. So um, right now it's just really using that same uh, print format that you'd have if you were printing a document. So you can get PDF um, as well as um, you know, print directly from there. Okay, I got a question about um, whether these features are available for free. Um, that's a great question. I'm gonna refer you to the product page um, where you can get a breakdown of um, how, what's included in the free account versus an organizational account versus the new storyteller user account. Um, and we'll be posting that link in this chat window. Um, in a second. Is the next update approximately rolling out uh, for the Developer Summit in March? Sarah Hutchinson, who is has already responded to that faster than I could, she said yes. Um, she is on our developer team. So thank you, Sarah. And thanks for your great questions, everyone. So some helpful resources that I wanna make sure that you know before um, we end today. Uh, we love hearing from you. We're most active on Twitter. So uh, you can follow us at ArcGIS Story Maps. Um, there we feature uh, stories by the user community. Uh, we also give lots of helpful resources that our team is creating every week. Um, there's a weekly, uh, it's called a weekly waypoint that my colleague Michelle curates. These include lots of really helpful resources, um, including blog posts, news stories that have come out. Um, so you can find out about that there. We've got our Learn resources um, through Esri Learn. Um, the Story Maps website is filled with great content as well. Um, so definitely visit esri.com slash story maps. We have reached our three o'clock end time. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye. We have recorded this presentation, so we will be uh, posting a YouTube video of this webinar. Um, if there was anything that you missed or you wanna share it around to your colleagues, um, that will be uh, appearing on our website. Um, I wanna thank Whitney and Reina, my colleagues, tune in to our next Story Maps Live, uh, which will be coming in April. Um, so thanks again, everybody. Mm -hmm.